Morning, guys. Morning. Okay. I'm going to make use of this phone here for just a second and try to get my hair in order. Just a little bit. Um, you know, this morning I got up and it was 7 o'clock when I got up. And, which is really good. I needed to sleep in a little bit because I have been blowing and going. And, oh, look, I still got, like, makeup underneath my eyes. I fell asleep on the couch last night and woke up from this dream where I had rescued an ambulance and yeah it was very interesting very interesting something I need to go and analyze later but um fell asleep on the couch and then just slept solid all night and woke up this morning. I had set my alarm for 630 because I was going to get up and I was going to write in my journal and I was going to do this and I was going to do that. And I had all this stuff planned that I was going to do this morning prior to getting unconscious coffee. That I would normally I try to write in my journal, which takes about five to 10 minutes. And, and then I was going to, that was going to be my first cup of coffee of which my thought for conscious coffee would come in, right? during that time frame and I was gonna make my second cup of coffee so I drink two cups of coffee every day and I was gonna come out here it's such a beautiful morning again and I was going to share whatever whatever came in right well it was a little after seven when I woke up I woke up and I was like oh shit I'm late I'm late I'm late and I went to see Alice in Wonderland last night yeah I was definitely having a white rabbit moment this morning uh, so as I was making my, my coffee, I stood there and I was like, okay, God, what are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about today? Nothing came in. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I was brain dead. I was like, yeah, nothing's coming in. And then I got sidetracked with a conversation and then I got sidetracked with some little stuff and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get my sweatshirt because it's like 40 degrees outside. So I'm going to go get my sweatshirt because I'm just on a tank top. I was like, I'm going to go get my sweatshirt so I can go out back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then more conversation happens. And I was just like, I didn't kind of lost my luster over coming and doing conscious class. I was like, nope, I committed yesterday to starting this up. I'm going to, I'm going to make this shit happen. And then my three and five year old woke up. Mom, you hear from the other room, you know, it's like, mom, mom. So I'm like, oh, there we go. So I've spent the last like 20 minutes with them trying to figure out what they want to wear this morning, with what they want to wear, which was my three-year-old was having a, a fashion crisis, you could say. So got that underway, and all of a sudden, guess what? Conscious Coffee had its title. And you know, today's, today's message, I, I really was thinking about it. I used to be so super critical and so organized. I was that mom who, who had all the little people toys organized and the Hot Wheels organized. It was like this plastic bin in my kids' bedroom and it said Hot Wheels and it said, you know, little people and it said, you know, uh, uh, animals and it said this and it said that and it was just organized, organized, organized. I would bleach my baseboards. Not that there's anything wrong with bleaching baseboards or being that orderly. I mean, I still do shit like that. The point is, is that we get so caught up on getting everything right, getting absolutely everything right and having everything in its place and making sure that, you know, that we don't have chaos in our life, that we don't have clutter in our life, that we don't, that we don't mess up, or at least that we don't appear like we're messy and all this shit is going on, right? We want to put forward our best self always. And that's a really good thing to put your best self forward, but it's not always a truthful thing. And that's where I think we live in a world today where we really are wanting true, authentic connection, communication. We want, we want to be able to show up authentically and we want others to be able to do that as well. That also means that we need to be able to accept, hey, good morning, Richard. We also need to be able to accept others showing up real, right? So we're, we're human. We have flaws. Our lives get crazy. Things get chaotic. We get a little messy, right? We get a little messy. And my OCD self 
definitely wants everything to be perfect all the time. It needs its order, needs its, you know, lack of chaos. And I kind of feel a little overwhelmed when chaos and mess come and disturb my, my flow, you could say. But I have learned over the course of especially the last 10 to 15 years of my life that chaos and messiness and just having a little thing, a little, you know, discombobulated is okay. It actually is a sign that you're moving in the right direction and that you're really doing shit. Because you know what? When I was had everything in order all the time, where was I putting my attention? I was putting my attention on keeping everything in order in the boxes that I wanted them to be in, in the boxes that I thought that they should be in. I was living up to the standards that I thought that society wanted me to live in, that I needed to live in to be a good mother, to be a good woman, to be a good sister, to be a good daughter, to be a good coach, to be a good wife. I was trying to fit these molds and make everything absolutely perfect all the time. And I drove myself fucking crazy doing it. Not literally, but probably literally just a little bit. Now I think about it, I'm like, yeah, probably most of my depression that I went through years ago, because I had like two, two and a half years of this deep, deep dive into massive depression. And when I went there, I remember that a lot of it was just focused on the fact that I really didn't have anything in my life but my but my neat and tidy house, my organization, my lack of clutter. And that lack of clutter as clean as everything was, as orderly as everything was, as well behaved as my children were, as much as everything fit this beautiful, perfect little picture, I didn't have happiness. And without that happiness, life just doesn't really matter, right? Like, what do we do anything for? We all are striving for one thing. We're striving for happiness. We're striving for inner joy. We want to experience ourselves. We want to experience joy. We want to have good stuff in our lives, right? Why do we buy a new car? Because it makes us feel good. Why do we move into a new house? Because it makes us feel good. Why do we buy a new outfit? Because it makes us feel good. Why do we buy the food that we're buying? Whether that is comfort food or healthy food, because it makes us feel good. Why are we with the people that we're with? Whether that is the community that we're with, the lover that we're with, you know, it doesn't much matter. We are with our friends, our lovers, our community, because they make us feel good in some way. Even if it is that we are constantly doing stuff with them, that makes us, like if we're doing stuff for somebody else, then we're feeling good because we're needed. We're feeling good because we're being requested to do stuff, to show up in a different way. It shows that we have value, that they, people are wanting to connect with us. We do it because we want to feel good, which means we want to be happy. It makes us happy in one way or another. It's a very selfish act. Everything that we do is selfish acts. Well, the reality is though, that if you're always giving to everybody else and you're always keeping your house, your office, your this, your that, absolutely fucking perfect, all your attention is on that perfection. And life is, the perfect life is actually a very chaotic, messy life. And I don't mean dirty. I mean, it just gets a little crazy sometimes. It gets a little Alice in Wonderland sometimes, right? It does. It gets like all this stuff going on where there's just some whole bunch of stuff happening and you don't know what's really going on, but you're really truly experiencing life. You're experiencing yourself in different ways. You're experiencing the people that you love in different ways. You're experiencing all this different stuff. And yeah, sometimes, you know, you, you end up with so much stuff that you got to do. It's just like, there's no way that I can get it all done. That's where you pick and you choose the most important person things out of that. What are the priorities that need to be dealt with, right? And the rest can wait until another day. It can, it, that can happen another day. But when we try to have that perfection, we get caught more on that and it takes away our authenticity of self. It takes away the fact we're focused now on the cleanup instead of the doing. And it is the doing. It is those actions. Hey, good morning, Laura. It is those actions that of the doing that get us, our life really moving forward, okay? So, you know, I wrote an article a few days ago saying that, um, 
it was uh, never ready for yes, I think, or something like that. Um, I write too much, right? <laughs> um, I think it was called never ready for yes. And my point in the article was that if I waited for, if you're always waiting for it to be the right moment, if you're always waiting for yourself to get ready to be motivated to, you know, to go do something, chances are you'll never do stuff, right? Like in an ideal world, we, we could plan it all out and it would just happen exactly the way we planned it. But how often do we plan something and actually have it happen exactly the way we planned it? Like hardly ever, right? That's like, oh, that's, that's never happens. Every now and then I could count on one hand and have fingers left over as to when that actually happened. When we do that though, we are always waiting for when we're ready. And if you're going to level up your life, if you're going to take that next plunge, if you're going to go deeper in your relationship, if you're going to go and do the things that you need to do for your, to get the body that you want, if you are going to go and start a new career, if you're going to go back to school, if you're going to, you know, change the place that you're, you're living and you're just waiting until it all feels perfect. You're probably just going to sit there, right? You're just going to be like the tortoise just sitting there, moving very, very slow. And yes, you can get far being that tortoise. And you want to make smart, wise choices. But at the same time, if you always just pause and pause and pause and never get any forward movement because you don't want to mess things up, you don't want to get a little crazy, you don't want to get a little, a little, you know, all over the place, well, then you're never going to truly start living that fuck yes life. You're never going to truly start taking those actions that you need to take. You're never going to really call in everything that you want because when blessings start coming down on us, it gets a little messy. It is a rainstorm of blessings and you got to kind of just catch them and figure out what to do with them because sometimes those blessings don't appear as blessings on the front side. Sometimes they appear as, as messes to clean up and it's while you're cleaning up the mess that you find your blessing. It's while you do different things. It's while you're out there and you're living and you're experiencing and you're showing up in the moment as you are meant to show up in the moment, which is authentically, that's when you truly find those blessings. Hold on just a second. Oh, Laura, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Laura. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. I hope that you can catch a few more of these conscious coffees. Hey, Craig, I see you on there. Tanya. Um, oh, well, hope that you catch another one. Definitely. Take the day to have that forward motion. That is for sure. I mean, it really is. It's just like get up and with a start. And But don't, don't make, you know, one of my other points was that, like yesterday I was talking about, it's okay to redo. It's okay to restart. It's okay to stop things. It really is. I mean, like sometimes you're a fuck yes to something, or maybe you're just a partial yes to something. You're not really up all the way in, or maybe you are all the way in and you start to get into something and then it switches on you, right? I mean, that is a, it's a very feminine state. And I probably am talking a little bit more to women here on this, to really tapping into your divine feminine, really tapping into your feminine power, which can drive guys crazy for sure. But, um, it it really is like tapping into your flow it means that you're doing what feels best for you and for the situation in that moment and sometimes the things that you need to do it's not always just being a yes it's definitely not always being a yes to the situation to the experience and I really feel compelled to share this as, as a really big point because the other day when I wrote that article on never ready to say yes I had a couple people email me and, and they were doing the, you know, like, oh, you gave me the motivation to go do this, to go do that. But I could feel their fuck no in it. I could feel that they were like, no. And it was just something that they shouldn't be doing probably because it really was something that made them feel like crap, but they were going to go do it to, to please somebody else. So they took my message of just, you're never going to be ready, but go do it anyway in this category of, well, I should do that even though it makes me feel like crap. No. Absolutely not. Do not do anything that makes that shames you, that guilts you, that makes you feel like shit, that brings you down. This is about high vibing it. And when you're high vibing it, that's where that fuck yes life is at. It's, it's about living a high vibe life. And you only get the high vibe when you are an authentic yes. And that sometimes that authentic yes is being an authentic no 
to doing something, to being around somebody, to having this relationship, to acting here or on this or that, to going and, and saying yes to somebody else. Having that fuck yes life and doing what is best for you to keep you in that high vibe is about you being a fuck yes to you and to you only. And when something really brings you down and there's so much reservation around it that you just feel yourself kind of gripping and not feeling good about it. And it's just like, ugh, that's not the state that you want to get into to go and do anything. That is not a yes. That is not a positive movement forward. That will throw you backward every single time. So that's going to cause trauma. It's going to cause mental, emotional, physical trauma to your body, to your world. And it's just not worth it. And that's definitely not high vibe in it. That's definitely not calling in that fuck yes life. It's definitely not opening yourself up to blessings at all. It's that is that's basically cursing yourself. Just to put it very, very frankly, it's cursing yourself. So, you know, having that fuck yes life is about really saying yes to you getting selfish and being okay with being selfish, which does not mean self-centered. Okay. It is about being selfish, which means I need to take care of me because when I take the time to take care of me, I have more of me to give to everybody else in my life. Right? So when we take on that attitude, then we're trying to please ourselves more so. And then we're talking about healthy pleasing here. Okay. That doesn't mean go and drink up the bar. That's not going to make you feel good. That's not going to, that's just masking shit. Okay. It doesn't mean that you want to go and have sex with 30 people just because you can. No, that's not probably going to make you feel good. You're not getting any connection out of it. That doesn't mean that you want to go and all of a sudden do something, you know, that's not going to be good for your environment, good for your family, good for Make healthy, wise choices in your fuck yes, but don't let society, your friends, your partner, your, your anything, make, don't make those decisions based on this is better for you than it is for me. Then, because if it really makes you feel shitty, then that's something that you're going to carry with you. That's that's wounding yourself. You're turning the knife on yourself and you're just hurting yourself. So, you know, part of that messiness, I guess you could say, to bring it back to today's topic, part of that messiness, that chaos that we can have in life is, is just that, that sometimes we say no. When we and we're saying yes to ourselves because a no can be an authentic yes to ourselves but that no can cause chaos in our life it can cause a messiness in our life because all of a sudden things might have to be rearranged they might have to be you know organized in a different way we might have to part ways i have lost many a friendship many a a relationship with a lover because I was not willing to, I've, I've even had my, my siblings, you know, like get into it with me because I wasn't willing to step into the ground of doing something that would completely damage myself or completely draw on myself to the point that I had nothing left to give or that I was feeling like crap about myself in some way. So I had to say no, which was actually yes to me. And that would cause like this 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 spillway of disaster, right? Because all of a sudden I've hurt their feelings. I've made them upset. If I really loved them, then I would do this. If I really cared, then I would, you know, I would provide this. It's, you know, like, why don't I ever give to their needs? Why don't I ever do this? Why don't I give a little bit of yourself? Stop being so selfish. I mean, selfish really has like this negative tone to it that we're all scared of being selfish when in truth we need to be selfish. We really do need to be selfish. It, we, we give so much of ourselves in all the wrong ways that we deplete ourselves. And then, and then we're just not that good to be around. Like that's why we're depressed. That's why we're angry. Talk about road rage. Talk about all the antidepressants that are out there. Why you can't sleep. The anxiety. The poor diets. The over drinking. Oh my God, it's five o'clock. Let's go get a drink. Yeah, that's all masking because we are doing all this shit for everybody else and we're so caught up in trying to make everything right and perfect for everybody else and we think that that's what we should be doing to be a good person is to hold that for everybody else get where I'm going with this that it just eats away at us it is like a cancerous beast and it just eats away at us and before you know it 
we're completely depleted and we're not a fuck yes and we're not living a fuck yes life and we're not enjoying life and we wonder where did all the good shit go? Where is that? Why is that always happening to that person? Why do they get the, the awesome blessings? Why do they have this going on? Why do they have that going on? You know, like, I want that. That's never going to happen for me. Damn fucking right it'll never happen for you as long as you're over giving of yourself. If you're draining yourself out, if you're completely giving yourself over to everybody else, you're being that people pleaser, but always saying yes to everybody else, then you're never, ever going to be high vibe in it. Never, ever will you be high vibe in it if you're always giving to others to that level, okay? So just really, truly start paying attention to where is that fuck yes at for you, not where that fuck yes is at for everybody else, okay? And realize that when you do say no, that you're going to make a mess, that you're probably going to make a mess occasionally because there is going to be that disturbance there where somebody's going to get their feelings hurt and you know it's just that's their shit it really is there's your shit there's god's shit and there's somebody else's shit and the only thing that you are ever in control of is yours and if you just walk through life with just that little bit of perspective right there and you keep your mind on only your business your life is going to get so much easier. You'll be high vibe when it's so much faster. And it really is like I told a man the other day, I see Addison is on. Hey, Addie. And, um, it was, a man came up to me and he said, you know, um, he was really concerned about judgment and he was concerned about, cause we did this workshop and orgasm camp yesterday. And he, he was asking me some questions about like, how do I stop caring what other people think? I'm like, you got to install a, a don't give a fuck button. You really have to install a don't give a fuck button. He's like, Oh, I, that, I, that's my problem. I, I, I care too much. I'm like, yeah, that is the problem. You care too much what other people think of you. And as long as you're giving a crap about what other people are thinking of you to the point that you're willing to change yourself, to always match what everybody else wants. You're not in embodying yourself. You're not stable in yourself. You're not grounded. You're flighty. It's quite literally, you know, you can be taken over by anything and you're all, you're never going to please anybody. Least of all yourself, you're just going to destroy yourself because you're always giving that version of you over. And the people who live the happiest, joyous, most balanced, most successful lives, make the most money, do all the travel the world, have great families, great relationships, awesome love affairs, you know, are healthy, are strong, and that we all want to that inspire us are the people that are really strong in who they are. They're the people who are really, really strong in who they are. And they have installed that I don't give a fuck button. And they are not afraid to push it and push it as much as they possibly can. So there you go. That's my message of today. That's what came up over. It took me about 45 minutes to have that come in. But I realized as I was getting constantly distracted this morning, it was just one distraction after the next, after the next that I was trying, I had this perfection thing going on. Like I had to be here at this particular time. And then I realized, you know, in Jamaica, they wouldn't bitch me out for this and just fuck it. Like, just go with it. Show up when you get to showing up and that's okay to just show up right then. And I just kind of took that little Jamaican. Thank God I just went to Jamaica because I was like, it's okay, Kendall. It's okay. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do this. It really is fine. And that is exactly where I went with it this morning. I was like, there's my message. There's my message. I turned around. I was like, I got my conscious coffee message today. It's okay to be messy. It's okay to not always get it right. And it sure the fuck is okay to say no to somebody else because that is always going to be a yes to you. Just get right with your yeses and your noes and keep your business, keep your nose in your business, not in somebody else's and not in God's business because you can't fucking control that shit, okay? You cannot control it, so just stop trying. Just stop trying, okay? And your life is going to be so, so much better. Okay, guys, you can follow me at KendallWilliams.com. You can also uh, follow me on my coaching page here on Facebook, although I have dedicated my myself to doing conscious coffees here on my profile. So bringing that to you guys first and then sharing it to everybody else. Um, I have a, a class that is going to be running here on Facebook on the 8th of December. It is the Yin Yang. It is, um, it's all about the balance of finding balance between work and life. I'm going to be teaching 47 hacks that I use day in and day out to get all my shit done and 
deal with my messes the best I possibly can and just how to work through that. I mean, a lot of my stuff that I deal with, you know, like I have anxiety, I get stressed out, I get overwhelmed, all the stuff that I've been talking to you about here, I'm going to show you how to actually get your nose out of everybody else's business and out of God's business. Keep it in your own and get that nice and tidy and orderly, not really, but find your own balance to life so that you can have that perfect work life balance because often what happens is we get so caught up thank you we get so caught up in um in in our work life that we have a tough time separating it from our family from our sex from you know from our self care from all this different stuff so how is it that somebody like me a mom of seven who runs her own business who's doing all this different stuff and anybody who like Addison sees my schedule she sees all this stuff I'm like boom 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 all over the place all the time and yeah sure I have my love vibe days and things kind of get to me every now and then but it is far and few between that those days actually hit and I know how to bounce myself right out of them like I can bounce myself out of those low vibes within 24 hours what used to take me a couple months or a year to get out of I can now get out of within 20 20 minutes to a day tops if it's like totally crucial nasty shit so be sure check that class out it is going to be a live stream totally interactive I'm going to give you like I said 47 tips and it is running right now on cyber week special okay um, I believe it's good and through tomorrow so grab it while you can at the deep discount it is I think like $120 off or something right now which is a good deal um, and that is going to be running you know live live right here on Facebook tons of interaction it's gonna be a two-hour intensive training with a Q&A group everything and a shit ton of information tons of downloads and different things for you to do to really get your life in that perfect ideal yin-yang balance for your fuck yes life not for anybody else's okay so click on the link that Addison has provided thank you very much for that and I will catch you guys on Tuesday on Tuesday for conscious coffee tomorrow tomorrow I'm off to take my daughter to testing because I homeschool my daughter too, my 15 year old um, taking her off for testing state testing stuff so no conscious coffee tomorrow guys but Tuesday I will be here somewhere between 6 and 7 a.m. okay catch you there